Folks, I'm telling you, I can't, I can't stress to you <laughs> enough how pumped up I am. Uh, May, January, February, March, April, May the 30th. May the 30th is my date that I have scheduled to release the GCI Turf Spray Buddy. I am just ecstatic about it. I cannot tell you how excited I am about that. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it, Folks in my my private Facebook group uh, will get first shot at it. Folks in my Facebook group who follow my lawn care guy, that's how they get in the Facebook group, whether it be Cool Season or Bermuda. That's not a trick to get you to buy the guide so you get in the group so that you know about Spray Buddy first. Okay, I'm not about that. But I just wanna let you know that the group is gonna get first shot at it and I wanna be up front with all of you. Doesn't mean nobody else is gonna get a shot at it. I'm just gonna give them first shot at it. Uh, and of course, we'll make videos on it all summer long. I cannot wait. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. Woo! Boy, we're moving at the speed of light right now. Things are happening really quickly. Uh, my Bermuda turf out here. Uh, the whole thing's Bermuda, tiff tough sod. The center's been overseeded with ryegrass. The side over here has been painted. The green that you see over there in the, the natural state for Bermuda this time of the year, that green is the Tiff Tuff waking up and coming out of dormancy. I cannot believe it. And it's been like that for three weeks. Three weeks, I'm not kidding you. Uh, it is March the 16th now. So about the third week of February, roughly, is when I began to notice that wake up. It blows my mind. I've never in my life seen Bermuda wake up that early. Uh, so there's no doubt in my mind that a lot of this Bermuda over here that's painted has already woke up. And of course, I can't see that now because the paint masks it, uh, covers it up. Uh, but if I were to take the mower and skin that down a little bit and cut the paint off, there is no doubt in my mind that a lot of that Bermuda's woke up already because the, the paint attracts heat from the sun and that's actually what makes that Bermuda wake up quicker than if you didn't paint it. So the non-painted is beginning to wake up. There's no doubt in my mind this whole section over here is probably woke up or a lot of it has. So why? Why in the world do you have it looks like a candy cane out here, a green candy cane at Christmas. This is a very rare time you'll hear me say, well, it's all about the money. And in this case, it is all about the money. And coaches I deal with on my athletic fields uh, spend the money, oversee with rye, and then I get all the complaints in June and July uh, about a bunch of dead Bermuda and the Bermuda not filling in like it should. Well, the alternative is the paint. So you don't have to spend that extra money in the summer to get the ride, uh, get the Bermuda to wake up. So this is an experiment, a live experiment right here on the tube so that I can show my coaches firsthand every single step of the process. It's not actually for you uh, on YouTube. I'm not meaning that in a disrespectful way. I'm, I'm documenting this so that I can send this to my coaches that our company actually does work for on their ball field. The joy of YouTube is anybody in the world can watch it. So you get to kind of see the whole process as well. So today, I'm gonna mow this bad boy, put a little striping action in it, my outlet uh, uplift. 86 right here, I'm cutting it about an inch. Um, I'm a, still a little bit disappointed with the seed job last year on the right. It's not quite as thick as I would like to see it. I can see a little bit of dormant Bermuda down through there. Of course, some people may like that for overseeded ball fields. Me personally, I want it as thick as the hair on a dog's back is how I want it. Uh, so, so we're gonna get, we're gonna give this thing a cut. I got a brand new spray gun I want to show you that hooks right into the flow zone. I'm gonna take you start to finish, show you 
you how to calibrate the thing, how to hook it up to the flow zone. Then I got some 505. I'm going to mix in, do a little bit of spoon feeding out here to the rye. Spoon feeding is giving the turf a little bit of fertilizer at, at more frequent times instead of, you know, heavier doses and the times be spread out apart. The purpose of spoon feeding this rye, I'm not really wanting to put down a heavy granular or even a heavy shot of liquid because I don't want that hanging around for any length of time because it might affect my, my program that I run on my Bermuda. So that's why I'm kind of tickling this rye along the way to green it up, lush it up, thicken it up. Because remember, ball season, right in the middle of ball season, so I want the field to look good. You gotta remember, you gotta have a coach's mindset, okay? I, I can't think like Pete wants to think out here. I have to think like the coach actually does in real world scenario. So let's mow this bad boy and we'll get with it. my mower blades on upside down I'll be right back I'm not gonna lie that ain't the first time I've ever done that and probably won't be the last time Lord have mercy <laughs> I had on uh, the high lift I had that bent down instead of up that's pretty embarrassing if you want to want me to be honest with you now we're cooking with grease Ugh! All right, round two. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh man, it looks good. Nice and striped up now. <laughs> Look at this over here. Look at this, uh, the strip of Bermuda where the first pass I went down, I went down and come back up beside here to catch that little bit of rye. Look at where the blades were turned upside down, the high lift. It skint that paint right off. Look at look at this white strip down through here. So I'm, I, now I gotta paint this again. Can't have it looking like that. So we got it mowed, uh, striped up nice. Let me uh, go get the gun and we'll go over that and, and go over the calibration and then we'll put some 505 down. I forgot to mention, I think this is worth saying something about it. I painted this Bermuda mid-November, mid-November, so that's, uh, what month are we in right now? It's March 16th, so that's mid-March, mid-November to mid-December to mid-January to mid-February to mid-March, that's four months worth of color. I've got out of this and it actually looked a little bit better until I mowed it the other day and cut some of it off. But uh, I, di I did go down at like a super heavy rate. I think the rate's eight ounces per gallon. And I think, best of my knowledge, I went down like 12 ounces per gallon. So I did do a pretty heavy rate, but I think that's pretty dang impressive that it lasted for four months and it, it's still green, other than what I just jacked up. So most of the time I will, pre-calibrate and kind of get out get all that ready for a video uh, this time I'm not gonna pre-calibrate this is this is the uh, uh, initial calibration uh, so we'll learn together we'll kind of do this on the fly and see what this thing calibrates out at uh, so typically the flows this is a cyclone it uh, has the lower pressure uh, than the Typhoon. So I figured if I do it with this one and the gun does fine with the Cyclone, it'll do fine with the Typhoon because the Typhoon, uh, you can get a little more output out of it. So now this is a little bit of a pricey uh, spray gun. Uh, the the, the, stru the structure of it, the handle of it is made in Italy. Uh, so it's a, a very, very super high quality gun. The tip is stainless steel. Uh, for the average homeowner or for the pro. Uh, 
I've had these set up on the website uh, so that they're intended to be used with ride-on sprayers, uh, spreaders, Turfware Steel Green Z Spray, any of them that have the a hose a separate hose that you would take out and do spot spraying with that's what this is to be used for any of the ride on spreaders uh, it, it'll work for those and i have it set up to work with all four of the different flow zone options so real simple uh, you know that, that you would have the gun and then the wand where you unscrew the gun completely uh, and you, you've got a, a, a fitting here and we've already adapted it. I've already got the corrected. It's a wonky, wonky adapter. It took me a while to find that adapter, but I found it. And you simply screw it on right to the end of the hose. Be very careful. There's a washer down in here, a rubber washer. You don't want that to fall out. You'll need that so it doesn't leak. And then here's your gun. And of course, that swivel, it still re retains its swivability. Swivability, I guess is what you'd call it. And of course, if it's going to be on my back, I'm going to orientate it so that it's the most comfortable. So let's uh, throw this thing on. Got two gallons in here. And let's see what kind of pattern we get. Uh, let's just let's start off full pressure. Set uh, pressure set number five. Oh yeah. Look at here. Look at that. So it, you, you can see how it works now. It's more like a super wide spray fan. Uh, I guess is what you how you can look at that. Uh, boom, the, these are the Boominator. Uh, most of you guys are familiar in the pro world. Uh, Boominator nozzles, and the Boominator company makes this nozzle. So that that should tell you alone the quality of this thing. But you can see if, if I come higher off the ground. Uh, is that in the frame? If I come higher off the ground, I'm just gonna let it sit here and run for a minute. Look at how wide that actually sprays. That's a good 10 foot. And that's on, this is on 60 PSI, I believe. I think the cyclone goes up to 60. Don't quote me on that, but I think it does. But you can see how, you can see how that's spraying. If you have more PSI, if this were on the Typhoon, it'd probably get a little more distance. If it were on a uh, ride-on sprayer, uh, like a Turfware, Z-Spray, Steel Green, where you could crank that pressure up and really get some flow to it, I mean, you could, you could do a larger area if you wanted to. Of course, it's not, I'm not promoting it to go out here and spray it, you know, 12 foot wide at a time. I, the way I use it, or the way I will use it with a backpack is I will find a comfortable distance or a comfortable position where I just hold my hand down and lock it. I'm just gonna hold my hand down and lock it and then I'm gonna spray like that. So you can kind of see my pattern I'm getting right there. And that is one, two, three foot pretty much on the dot. I wear, I wear a size 12, so we'll go with three foot. Now consistency is really important in calibration. Of course, I'm not gonna change my pressure back here. I'm not gonna mess with that. Uh, so that's gonna be consistent. And then the height in which the nozzle is off the ground, that's gonna be consistent. Obviously, when I'm walking, it might go up and down just a pinch. I'm not at all concerned about that. But that's, that's the, the secrets to uh, calibration is consistency. And of course, I can't change the nozzle opening. Uh, I mean, you can unscrew this and put something else on it if you wanted to, but there's no point in doing that because this, this nozzle is the bomb. But you can see right there, it is a little heavy on the outside and the inside. You can see that right there where it's puddling up just a little bit on the outside and inside. If you were using this on a machine or a machine that has a pump that would create more pressure to to get a little bit more oomph out of the end of the nozzle, I think you would see some of that go away. Um, we're all, we are going to put these on our turf wares, both on the spot spray tank and on the uh, 
the wand and ho the hose that's connected to the main two tanks. We are going to be using these exclusively from now on. Uh, I just like them that much. I mean, if you're running down beside a, I think what they call it, a parkway where you got the little, you know, two, three, four, four foot strip of grass down and then you got a sidewalk and then the yard, you know, even the trim nozzles on those things kind of spray a little too wide so the this gun is going to eliminate a lot of that uh, on ride on machines when you're doing your edges and uh, with boom less nozzles you get that stray droplet that flies out and hits Ms. Nancy's rose bush her prize rose bushes that she's worked on for 100 years and you get some herbicide damage on them but all that will go away with this because you're not going to throw that wild drop it out and, and hit Ms. Nancy's prize rose bushes. You can simply be on the machine and ride right along the edge and trim that bad boy out just as tight as you could please because that, 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 leading, that leading edge right there is, is pretty tight. You're not going to get that wild drop that just flies off. So let's get a good idea about how much comes out of this thing in a minute. And of course, we don't calibrate by the minute. We calibrate per thousand. I doubt, uh, highly, highly, highly doubt you'll ever find a, uh, highly doubt you'll ever find a um, jug of herbicide or insecticide, fungicide. Oh, what happened? I hit the wrong button, hang on. I doubt you'll ever find any of that that says, spray this much per minute it just it just don't happen it's all per thousand but i do want to get an idea of how much i can get out in a minute so we're going to do 30 seconds here and multiply that times two and that will give us a, a gallon per minute rate on this thing again cyclone sprayer i'm on the highest setting 29 30 that's a half a minute 30 seconds and I got 44 ounces so we do 44 times 2 is 88 so 88 ounces uh, in a minute with the cyclone uh, on on high pressure so uh, now let's go out here and just calibrate the thing and uh, we'll go out and spray this 505 all right so what I did was I actually went out to the yard and that mower that I use mows 34 inches wide. The actual cut is around 32. So uh, it was 36 it, with holding it kind of out like this. And I took the sprayer out of there physically and walked and made myself straighten my arm out just a little bit more just to narrow the spray width down just a little bit so it covers a stripe pattern very easily. That way I can spray by my stripes, which is uh, much, much, much easier to do. So we wanna calibrate this per thousand. So what we're gonna do is we need to turn that 32 inches into feet. So we're gonna do 32 divided by 12 is 2.66. So we'll use the 2.66, we'll do a thousand divided by 2.66 uh, 375 feet I don't have 375 feet here <laughs> to, to go out there and walk and time myself let's divide that by 10 37 and a half foot okay let's take this and let's measure off 37 and a half foot all right so that's 37 and a half right there uh, let's go with that. That way, I think that's in the camera. That'll finish up right here. So that's 37 and a half foot. Remember, our multiplier is 10. The only reason I'm doing that is so I don't have to walk 375 feet, to be honest with you. Oh, long day today. I'm ready to go home. I'm going to come right back here. High pressure. Got my thing working, pumping. I'm going to get my stopwatch out right here stop watch and i'm gonna time the walking speed it takes to walk this 37 uh feet uh 37 and a half feet right here now i'm going kind of slow i'm taking my time you'll see me in a minute when i get up there but i'm really i want to go down with a pretty heavy volume right here boom 
17.78, we'll call it 18 seconds. So now we need to time uh, 18 seconds over here in the jug. Let's just set this right here. That way I can put all this up here and I ain't gonna take my backpack spray off. Reset, 18 seconds. That's five. 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Bingo. Right there, stop, reset. And we are at, so we're right at 28 ounces in 18 seconds, okay? So we get our uh, calculator right back out. 28 times our multiplier is 10, that's 280, divided by 128 ounces in a gallon. Woo, so that means we're going down at two gallons per thousand uh, using that particular walking speed. Uh, in this pressure setting. So let's double check that one more time just to make sure we're right. We're at 28 and of course times 10 is 280 and then you that's ounces because uh, we need to multiply this times 10 right here. Then we're going to divide that by how many ounces in a gallon uh, which is 128 so 2.18 so we'll call that two gallons per thousand is what we're going down at. I've got 2,000 square feet of rye out there. I got a four gallon backpack sprayer, so a full tank should be spot on perfect to do that. I'm gonna run the uh, 505 at six ounces per thousand. So I got 2,000 square foot, so that's 12 ounces of product that I need. I'm gonna run the adjuvant at ounce per thousand, so that's two ounces of adjuvant. So I'm gonna put uh, 12 ounces of 505 in here. Uh, going to fill it up almost to the top, check my pH, make sure it's five or slightly below, put two ounces of the adjuvant in here, mix it, go spray. As of today, mid-March, I think Tammy said we're in 37 states registered for the, the 505 and the, uh, the calcium, so as soon as that is uh, registered in the other states, which won't be long, uh, I'll let my group know, my Facebook group know first, and then I'll uh, send a, um, a blast email out and let my email crowd know about that when it's ready. And of course, I'll make a video here shortly thereafter going over the new product. Now, I'm gonna walk beside the stripe I'm spraying. Okay, that, that's kinda how I've got this set up. You can see I'm just kind of holding my arm down. Nice, natural pace here. It's, it's not a, at all a full speed walk. Just kind of walking nice and slow based on how we calibrated it. That's the key to it. If I walk faster, I'm putting less material down. I just change my calibration. If I walk slower, I'm putting more material down uh, and I just change my calibration. So, you know, that walking speed is pretty crucial. If you get off, you know, a little bit here and there, it's not a major deal. Uh, nobody's gonna throw you in long care jail or anything like that. But you just do wanna maintain a pretty consistent walking speed. So I get down here to the end, I'm gonna turn right around, and then we'll change hands, put this thing in my left hand, and just walk right down the, the next stripe. That is one cool advantage to this. If, you know, typically we would spray out front of us and you would walk right through the material right after you spray it. Of course, that don't hurt anything. Been doing it that way for a very long time. Been riding machines right through the material as you spray. It does not hurt a thing. Uh, unless it's scalding hot, <laughs> then that's, that's a different story. We'll do a video on that in the summer. But if you're concerned about having to walk in the material as you're spraying it, then this right here is a very good uh, solution for you because you don't have to. So I basically just swung it around, go back to my right hand, and see everything over there to my right has been sprayed of course, nothing over here to my left has been sprayed and I'm not having to walk through it. 
But again, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to push you that you have to buy this gun so you don't walk through your, uh, your spray. That's just, I'm just saying that's a side effect of using this gun or a, maybe an attribute of, of using this gun because some people don't like walking through the spray. It doesn't bother me one bit. I've been doing it for years. I believe that uh, I'm gonna probably recommend you not go past the four foot spray width on this thing, uh, especially if you have a uh, Typhoon or Cyclone sprayer. Uh, the reason for that is, I just don't think it has the pressure. This particular sprayer, either one of them just don't have the pressure or the hump behind it to really get you a good, solid, consistent pattern at, that, at those low pressures. So I, I wouldn't do that. I just, that's just me. I'd try to keep it less than, less than four foot wide and roll with that. All right, I'm coming down to the wire. I got this last stripe. And just for kicks and giggles, I want to see how much I got left. I've got roughly a half a gallon left in here. Now I'm going to continue on with my same walking speed I've been walking. And if I got a little bit left over at the end, I'm going to show you what I do with it. Hey, look at there. That did come out just right. So I've got just a little bit left over in the tank. I don't know. Let me. Let me show you what I got. That might be maybe 16 ounces in the, in the tank, maybe. So that's not a big deal to me. Of course, I don't want to waste the product and dump it out. Uh, I'm going to look for the thinnest area in this part of the yard. Now, this down here is good and thick. But when I get back down here, back down toward the uh, camera, I know this is a little bit thin. Now, if you have one of these sprays, you know the pickup is right here in this bottom left-hand corner. The pickup tube, the suction in, in, uh, the in, intake that goes to the pump is right there. So when I get down that low, I typically just let it hang on one shoulder. That way all my liquid is right there in that bottom corner. Now I've just got a pint left. So I'm gonna kind of walk over this area really quickly maybe hold this just a touch higher whoop like that you can see it's almost out already look at that let's just do this now i can do that big wide spray see there look at that didn't take but just a few seconds and that was gone and look at that i'm still letting it pump and run i'm getting every little last drop out i'm just kind of spraying it Whatever comes out, comes out. Look at that. I'm gonna stop, see if the pump will pick up again. It's running dry. Nothing's coming out. Nothing's coming out. I am bone dry now. Look at that, I've got every single, listen. Can you hear that? Listen to the, on the mic. Let me put you up to the mic. Can you hear that? Bone dry. So now what I do is go put me a little bit of water in it, quart, half a gallon, whatever, and then turn the pump on and spray the water out and just fill the line back up and that way the thing's ready for me to spray next time. All right, so sorry about the long video. I know some of you like two and three minute videos so you can get back to your busy life. I'm sorry, I'm a detailed person, okay? I like to show every little step of the process so that it helps the person that just don't know how to do all this. I've been doing this 20 years, so I can do this stuff in my sleep if I wanted to, but a lot of people can't do that. And so I feel like it's my job and my responsibility to teach every little intricate detail that I can possibly teach to help the beginner and even some folks that maybe have been doing it for a while and they learn uh, something from time to time, I might say. You will never ever hear me say I know it all. I am 100% of the time always willing to learn something new. Uh, typically, there's not much that happens on happens during the course of a day here that I don't learn something. Whether it be with my internet business, I learn something new. My boots on the ground business, I learn something new. Uh, life, 
I learned something new. So uh, I just like the details. So I apologize for the long video. But there you go. Uh, it's done. Uh, we're supposed to get a, get some light showers uh, tomorrow afternoon. Today's a Thursday. It's tomorrow's Friday, so tomorrow afternoon. That'll give it plenty of time for the plant to absorb the material, get it going. Then I'll get a little rain on top of that, uh, you know, tomorrow afternoon and even further activate things and get it going because I want this ryegrass, I want to mow it every other day. Uh, it's in its prime, it's that time of the year. It's drop dead gorgeous right now. Uh, it doesn't look dark green to you on camera because it's right beside some turf that's painted extremely dark green that's like dark 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 green the contrast makes it look less dark green than it actually is so plans out here uh, won't be too much longer probably end of april we'll spray the rye out and i know that's not textbook i get it i understand i know what the textbook says typically you would spray it out now before the Bermuda greens up and comes into full effect, that way you get rid of the rye and the Bermuda can do its thing. Well, that's not how the coaches do it. Okay, that's not how real life, real world scenario, that's not how it happens, at least around here. Uh, my experience with the, the, the many, 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 many fields I've overseeded with rye, uh, they usually wait till after ball season. And, and, and you know that sometimes goes into late April, even into May. It's been June before, before I spray the ryegrass out. So we're gonna leave this stuff uh, as long as it needs to stay here so that it mimics real world situation, my real world situation. So when I start getting calls from coaches saying, hey Pete, let's go and spray the rye out. Uh, you know, it might be uh, May, June, sometime like that. That's when we'll spray this rye out because we're going to mimic what they do in real life because this is a real life situation right here. I want to show them what actually happens and not some manufactured thing. So I'm going home. I am tired. It has been a heck of a day, wide open, nonstop all day long. I'm going home, get some beans. I'm going to sit on the couch and chill and watch some TV. I did get my hair cut, uh, my, my man bun, my ponytail, all that's gone. So there you go for all, those of you that like the high and tight, uh, it, I got it back. Um, but anyway, that's it, that's all for today. Uh, as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch, I'll check you later. I forgot to say, uh, with pretty much all the equipment, spray equipment, if you purchase it through GCITurfAcademy.com, Typically, you would get a, a link to a training video that would train you how to calibrate it and how to use it. There won't be one for this particular gun uh, because you just watched it. You just watched the, the calibration and how to use it and all that. So I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, probably next week, I'll go in and make one using the turfware and, and show folks uh, that have Z sprays, steel green turf wear, uh, and any other ride on sprayer. I even use the thing on my multi pro uh, for edging out around the fences and stuff like that. Uh, but I'll, I'll make a dedicated video on that using my XL 460 turf wear and show you how I calibrate and how we use it.